Hello and welcome to the SG3 Guard Post instructional and training video. During this video we'll show you how to install the SG3 and well how to program it. The security guard is a very powerful standalone security alarm system. The main controller includes a very powerful ear piercing onboard siren that will activate in the event of an alarm but this siren speaker will also activate um, voice prompts as you're using the system to make it easier to guide you through operation. The SG3 is a power miser. The main unit runs off its own internal battery for up to four months without needing recharging. This makes the security guard extremely cheap to run but it also means that you can use it in places as in addition to your home office but places where there's no mains power um, such as caravans, building sites, mobile homes, vehicles, etc. So it makes this unit very unique. Also on the main unit is a six character scrolling LED display. This large and bright scrolling display provides system status and information which is clear and easy to understand sentences. Coupled with the security guard's voice prompts there is absolutely no confusing symbols or abbreviations to interpret. It's totally simple. The SG3, living up to its all-inclusive design philosophy, also includes an onboard motion sensor that can detect motion up to 15 metres away from the main controller. In addition to this, you can easily add extra detection devices to cover even more rooms as required. The security guard radio keys are your rugged and waterproof personal remote controls. Additional radio keys can be added to the system, so you can give one to each member of the family. In addition to the radio keys, you can also program in wireless keypads, wireless smoke detectors, as we mentioned before, additional PIRs, radio read switches, radio doorbells and panic buttons. This makes the security guard very unique and powerful for any application. The SG3 also includes an onboard GSM dialer. The GSM can also be used for logging back to a control room for 24-hour back-to-base monitoring or additionally it can also be used for sending SMS text messages to personal mobile phones, voice messages to mobile phones. It can also be used at the control room for two-way voice communications for verification of alarms and in some limited application you can also use the GSM dialer to program the system as well, which we'll have a look further in the programming. In keeping with the simple to install design philosophy, the SG3 SIM card is easy to access from the rear of the panel, so obviously it's easy to install this before the unit is mounted onto the wall. On the rear of the SG3 you'll see a small little removable compartment that will give you access to the SIM card slot. Simply remove this cover, open the SIM card insertion slot, put the SIM card in, lock it back in position and the SIM card is locked in there safe and secure. The SG3's design philosophy is for simple installation. There's no need to pull the system apart to have to be able to get to the installation points. All you need to do is to remove the speaker grill and also the access points around the display cover and you'll be now start to see where the mounting holes are. The SG3 has a double skin and the front cover forms a secure clamshell when the security guard is installed. The unit must be removed from the wall before attempting to remove the front cover. Screw mounting holes are provided for both flat wall or mounting in corners. The security guard should be mounted position as high as you can in the wall which provides a clear field of view for the onboard PIR. On the back of the security guard is an optional wire harness that can be used to hardwire additional equipment such as an inside siren, outside siren, strobe etc. As well as an internal and external siren cover and strobe you can also got a pair of wires that can permanently connect to 17 volt AC power supply for permanently connecting power to the security guard. 
Full installation instructions are on page 6 of the installation manual that accompany this security guard and of course it's a good idea to wire this before mounting the unit on the wall because once it is mounted on the wall it is secure to prevent people tampering with the wire. Once you've fully secured the security guard onto the wall, fitted the cover grill and the display cover, we're now ready to power the unit up and start to program it. To enter program mode you have to have the system fully powered down that's done by the key override at the bottom of the unit you then turn the system to the on position and that will then display on the LED display the version number of the system the security guards radio key or remote control has two functions when we're in programming mode which we're going to cover now we use the buttons to cycle through the programming options, select them and save them. Once we get into the programming, as you'll see, we use the left key or the unlock key to step through all the programming options. The right key or the locked key will be used to select the option and then the panic button will be used during program mode to save that option. When you first power up the SG3, you have 10 seconds to push either the top left or top right button on the radio key to keep the system in program mode. If you don't push any buttons within that 10 seconds, the system will time out and go to normal operation. As the SG3 powers up into learn mode, if we push the top left off button, it will cycle through the controller programming options. However, if we push the top right the on button it will then take us into learn mode where we can learn in more detection devices. We'll now have a good look at learning in devices into the security guard 3. As we said once we power the security guard up we have the learn flashing on the display. The next step we then push the on button or the top right button on the radio key to enter into the learn programming mode. Once we enter device programming mode, the ready will now flash on the display and while it is in ready mode, it is waiting for a learn in signal to be automatically sent from one of the detection devices you wish to program in. While the SG3 is in ready mode, to learn in a wireless PIR, as soon as we insert the batteries, it sends an enrolment signal to the SG3. The same is also for door or window contacts. With wireless read switches, again inserting the battery will send an enrolment signal. For additional radio keys, panic buttons, doorbells, etc., because we can't get to the battery, what we do for those is push the panic button or the button for 8 seconds, making sure you hold the button down for the full 8 seconds to send the enrolment signal. This is irrespective of what light comes on when you first push the button, make sure you hold it down for a good 8 to 10 seconds. As will a wireless smoke detector, again inserting the battery sends an enrolment signal. Once a controller has received a learn in signal, the display will now display the new sensor or key number on the display. New devices are added to the next available slot. Up to 23 additional sensors and radios keys can be added to the Security Guard 3 and as they're added they'll automatically be added to the next vacant slot. Once a new device has been added, you can press the on button on any valid radio key to view a sub-menu options for the new device. Alternatively, you can press the off button to go back to learn mode to learn in new devices. Depending on what the devices we've learnt in, the sub-menu will vary. We'll first of all have a look at the sub-menu for radio keys. When the on button or the top right button of the radio key is pushed to go into the sub-menu, the first option we'll get is key. This is the default for the four button radio keys, so when selected the radio key or remote control will work as normal with the arm button, disarm, panic and auxiliary buttons working. To cycle through the options, we press the top right button of the radio key again, or the on button, and this will cycle through. The next option displayed will be duress. If duress option is selected, then your panic button on your radio key or your radio device 
will activate a silent alarm and will not activate the siren. Again, pressing the on button on the radio key will then move you to the next option which is medic. Medic, which is short for medical, works very similar to the duress alarm, however instead of sending a duress we'll send a medical alarm when the key panic button is pressed. Pressing the on button again will move you to the next option which is bell or doorbell. The doorbell function allows for a wireless button to be programmed in that when activated will activate a bell chime rather than alarm. Pressing the on button on the radio key again moves us to the next option which is no pan or no panic. When no panic option is selected for this radio key it totally disables the panic button. Pressing the on button on the radio key again moves us to the next option which is a raise. When a raise is selected for the programmed radio key, it will totally delete that key out of the system. After using the on button on the radio key to cycle through the options of key, duress, medic, bell, no panic, erase, etc., when you get to the option you want, you then press and hold the panic button for about three seconds, and it will then lock in and store that option for the key that you're wishing to program. We'll now have a look at detection devices, whether it be a motion detector, door or window contact, of how they can operate within the system. Once we've learned a device in, we then can press the on button on the radio remote, and that will take us into a sub-menu. We're then using the lock key again, we can cycle through the sub-menus of the various options that are available to us, whether it be alarm, chime, fire, etc and we'll have a look in more detail of what these options are but each time you hit the right we cycle through um, one option at a time. Once a detection device has been learnt in and we push the right button on the radio key to go into the sub menu the first option we get to is alarm. If the detection device is programmed to be alarm then the detection device is active when the system is armed and inactive when the system is disarmed. This is a default setting. Pressing the on button on a programmed radio key will then move us on to the next option, which is home, which means the detection device will be active when the system is both in the home mode as well as fully armed mode. Pressing the on button on the radio key again will next move us to the next option, which is Home 2. In Home 2 mode, the detection device will be active when the system is in Home mode or Home 2 mode, as well as Fully Armed mode. Pressing the on button on the radio key again takes us to the next option, which is Fire. If a detection device, typically a smoke detector, is programmed for fire, then it is active 24 hours a day regardless if the system is armed or disarmed it will still be active. Again pushing the on button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is chime. In chime mode the detection device is active and it will give you a warning when the system is disarmed however the detection device will not be active in the armed home or home to modes. Pressing the on button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is a chime standing for alarm chime. When in the alarm chime mode, the detection device will be active and can generate an alarm when the system is armed. However, when the system is disarmed and the detection device is activated, it will just activate a chime on the SG3. The next option after pushing the on button on the radio key is home chime or H chime. This is very similar to alarm chime. However, the chime will only occur when the SG3 is in home mode. When the system is fully armed, it can still generate an alarm. Pushing the on button on the radio key takes us to the next option, which is H2 chime. H2 chime is almost identical to H chime. However, it will activate a chime signal when the security guard is both in the home and home two modes. When the system is fully armed, it can still activate an alarm. The next option is silent. If a detection device is set for silent, it will activate the dialer, however, there will be no local sirens activated. 
pressing the on button on the radio key again takes us to the last option for programming in detection devices which is exclude or erase. This option will vary depending if you're programming sub-menu options for the main PIR on the security guard or additional detectors. If you're programming the main detector then what will happen you'll get the exclude option which means when you select it it will disable the onboard PIR. However, if you're programming submenus for additional detectors into the SG3, you'll have the Arrays option, where this allows you to erase the detection device from the SG3. So once you've selected the option that you wish this detection device to work under, you press and hold the panic button to save it. So in recapping of how to learn in a new device into the SG3, when we first power the system up, it goes into program mode, and we'll have the Learn LED or Learn Display flashing. We want to select that option, so we push the right, top right button on the radio key to select it. We'll have the ready light flashing, ready waiting for a signal. We then send an activation or a learn in signal from the detection device we wish to program in. The display will then display the slot number or sensor or radio key number that's learned into. We can then press the top right hand key of the radio key again to select the sub menus and we can then select how we want that device we've just learned in to operate. As mentioned earlier, pushing the top left or the off key on the radio remote, it cycles you through the options as we go through the programming. For example, it will take you from key one, push the off button, it goes to sensor one, off again goes to the next option which is range, next option pulse each time we push it etc. If we wish to go back a step we press the left button just under the LCD display and that will take us back a step. Once we get the option we want we then push the right arrow will get us into the programming mode for that option selected. Once we've added additional radio keys, radio detection devices if any we then push the left button on the radio key, the off button, and that'll take us to the next security guard um, programming option, which is range. The range option selects um, between high and low of what detection range you want on the main PIR on the security guard. Low will then reduce the detection area to typically 8 metres, where high would lift the range to about 12 metres. While we're in the range setting, pushing the on button will cycle through the two options between high and low. Once you've selected the option you wish, you then press and hold the panic button and this will then save the setting. The programming sequence is identical as we go through the security guard. Hitting the on button will then cycle through the submenu options and the panic button will then save that option. Once you've programmed the range option, you then press the left button or the unlock button on the radio key, takes you to the next option which is pulse. Pulse relates to the onboard PIR on the security guard and it effectively sets how many detection pulses are required before it will activate an alarm. This range between 1, 2, 3 and 4 will then virtually make that onboard PIR more or less sensitive to false alarms. Once you've got the option you want, you then push the panic button to save this option. Pushing the off button on the radio key will then take us to the next option, which is signal, or radio signal strength. Pressing the on button on the radio key will take us into the signal strength option. In here, we can check the signal strength of your radio keys and radio devices, or radio detection devices. Once selected this option, the SG3 will then listen and wait for a radio signal to be received. Once it receives a signal, it will display the name of the radio device that sent the signal, example, key 1, key 2, etc., sensor 2, sensor 3, and once it receives that signal, it will also display the strength between 1 for weak and 9 for strong. Pressing the on button on the radio key, We'll get into the signal strength check and to test a radio key you press the panic button to send a signal strength check 
to the security guard. For checking the signal strength for a PIR, a radio read switch, etc., while you're in the signal strength mode, simply activate the detector and the security guard will display the signal strength that's received. This is a great tool to see how good your signal is that's being received back at the security guard from the detection device. Pressing the off button on the radio key will take us to the next option which is radio jam or radio jamming alarm. When the radio jamming alarm feature is enabled in the security guard it will generate a chime in the disarmed home or home two modes if it receives continuous source of radio interference. If the SG3 is armed, the system will go into full alarm. Pressing the on button on the radio key will cycle through the sub options, which is off, which means it's disabled, on means it's enabled, you'll get the chimes and alarm, or silent, which means it will still be active, but it will only report through to the control room. If you wish to change this setting, select the option you wish, push and hold the panic button, and this will then save your setting. Pushing the off button on the radio key will then cycle through to the next option which is radio message substitution alarm. If radio sub is enabled, the SG3 will generate a chime alarm in the disarmed home or home 2 modes and a full alarm when the panel is armed if it senses an intentional radio message substitution being received that has not been sent from an SG3 detection device or a radio key. Pushing the on button on the radio key will cycle through the sub-menus, which is off as default, or on enable this alarm. Once you've selected the option you want, push and hold the panic button, which will then save this setting. Pushing the off button on the radio key moves us to the next option, which is radio supervision interval. All Nest wireless detectors, whether it be PIR, smoke detector, radio read switch, etc., will send a supervision signal every hour if enabled. Setting this option in the SG3 sets up at what interval should the SG3 be looking for this supervision signal being sent if it has been enabled in the detection device. If it doesn't receive a supervision signal before this time expires it can then generate an alarm. Although this feature is often only used for higher security applications, it's always recommended to have at least four or eight hours enabled, and not often is it set for one hour. Pressing the on button on the radio key will then take us into this option, and then each subsequent press of the on button will cycle through the options between one hour, four hours, eight hours, 16 hours, or 24 hours, or back to default which is off. Once you select the option that you wish, if you wish enable at all, press and hold the panic button to save your setting. Pressing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is lockout or alarm lockout. Alarm lockout prevents the sirens from sounding due to multiple activations from the same detection device should be noted that the external siren will only sound once on an activation of alarm until the system is disarmed and then armed again. This is to comply with a lot of the council's or government's regulations for noise on external sirens. What this alarm lockout feature does, it controls the security guard's internal siren or built-in siren. Pushing the on button on the radio key will take you into the lockout option and then subsequent pushes of the on button will cycle between on and off to enable or disable this option. Once you've selected the option you wish, you then press and hold the panic button on a valid radio key to save your setting. Pushing the off button on the radio key again takes us to the next option which is entry, entry delay time. The entry delay time allows you time to disarm the system once a detector is activated. The SG3 is normally armed or disarmed by a radio key from outside the protected area, but in some instances you may want to disarm from inside the premises, so therefore you may want to adjust this time. If you do wish to adjust the entry time, pressing the on button on the radio key will take you into the settings 
and subsequent pressing of the on button on the radio key will cycle through the sub menu which is adjustable time between 5 seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds 20 25 30 and back to 5 seconds of default once you have set the time that you wish pressing and holding the panic button will then save your setting Pushing the off button on the radio key will take us to the next option which is exit delay time. The exit delay time is very similar to the entry but in this instance when we arm the system with the radio key it's the time that we've got to exit the premises before all the detection devices will become active. If you wish to adjust the exit delay time you push the on button on the radio key and that will bring into the sub menu for exit time and each subsequent press of the on key will then cycle through the time which is adjustable between 5 to 60 seconds in 5 second increments and once you set the option that you wish you can then press the panic button to store your required time. Pressing the off button on the radio key again moves us to the next option which is siren and siren run time. If you wish to adjust how long the siren will sound for from the default of 5 minutes, you push the on button on the radio key and this will take you to the sub menu for siren run time. Each time you then push the on button on the radio key, it will cycle through the sub menu and you can then bring up between 1 to 5 minutes of how long you want the siren to sound for. Once you have got the time you wish to have, you push and hold the panic button and that will save your setting. Pushing the off button on the radio key again takes us to the next option which is chirps or external siren chirps. If you have an external siren connected to your system this option allows you every time you arm and disarm the system to chirp or pop the outside siren. An arming you'll get one chirp and disarming it will provide three chirps. It should be noted that the chirps will only occur when arming and disarming the system and not putting it in home or home to modes. Pressing the on button on the radio key will enter into this option and then subsequent presses of the on button on the radio key will toggle between on and off, on being that will supply chirps, off meaning will not supply chirps. Once you have the option you wish, press and hold the panic button to lock in and save that option. Pressing the off button on the radio key again takes us to the next option which is V-arm or voice enunciation for arming and disarming. As default every time you arm and disarm the SG-3 the internal siren on the SG-3 will give a voice enunciation of the status. You can disable this or enable it um, via this option. Pressing the on button on the radio key will then take you into this option and then subsequent presses of the on button will toggle you between on and off to turn the feature on and off. Once you've selected the option you wish, press and hold the panic button on the radio key and this will then save your option. Pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is V alarm or voice alarms. Very similar to voice arming in the sense that if an alarm activates the security guard 3 via voice enunciation will give you a voice message for this alarm. Programming is the same push the on button to select the sub menus and you can turn this option on and off. Once you select the option you want press and hold the panic button which will then save this option. Pushing the off button on the radio key moves us on to the next option which is voice enunciation for battery alarms. This option when enabled will provide voice enunciation of a battery events in the case of a low battery of a detection device or the main security guard 3. Pushing the on button on the radio key takes us into the sub menu where you can then subsequent presses of the on button cycles through between enable or disable or on and off and once you've selected the option you wish you press and hold the panic button to save that option. Pushing the off button of the radio key moves us on to the next option which is voice enunciation of system faults. 
pressing the on button of the radio key takes us into this option where again subsequent pushes of the on button cycles between the sub menus of on or off and you can enable or disable voice enunciation for faults once you select the option you wish press and hold the panic button again which then saves your setting pushing the off button on the radio transmit again takes us to the next option which is open or open closing reports Open closing reports are typically used if you have the dialer activated, whether you're going back to base or reporting via SMS monitoring, etc., um, to report every time the alarm system is turned on and off. Open refers to when the security system is disarmed or you're opening the building to be free for people to move in, and closing is for when you close the premises or arm the system and that's what we relate to as closing is when the security system is armed so therefore if you enable opening or closing or arm and disarm reports then every time you arm or disarm the security system it will notify you um, so you've got advice of when the system has been opened and closed or armed or disarmed if you wish to set the open and close reports you then push the on button on the radio key to enter into these options when off is selected then all opening and closing reports are disabled if we then push the on button which will then on will come on and when on or enabled opening and closing reports um, will be sent at the end of the exit delay once you've selected the option you wish push and hold the panic button to save your settings pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is low battery reporting again if the dialer is enabled we can get the system to report via the dialer back to base monitoring or via SMS etc um, of when a device has a low battery if you wish to program a low battery report via the dialer push the on button on the radio key which takes us into this menu and then subsequent presses of the on buttons will cycle through the options the first option is none where no reports will be sent pressing the on button takes us to main so that will report low batteries if the main security guard 3 battery goes low pushing the on button on the radio key takes us to the next sub menu option which is sensor if sensor is selected then the SG3 will report low batteries including panic buttons from any detection device pushing the on button on the radio key again takes us to the next sub menu which is all if all is selected then low battery reports will report via the dialer on both the main security guard 3 low battery as well as any detection device that's connected into the SG3 once you've selected the option you wish push and hold the panic button to save your settings pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next main menu option which is client where it allows you to set a client account number a client account number is an individual number assigned to you from the control room so when the panel reports back to the back to base monitoring it knows what panel it came from this number must be obtained from the control room before you program it to program in a client account number we push the on button on the radio key that takes us into the menu options to allow you to program once you enter the client account number option the first digit of the number will be flashing each time you push the on button of the radio key it will move on to the next digit until you get to the number you wish then you press and hold the panic button to store that number and then moves to the next number same sequence on button moves you through to the next number you wish hit the panic button to store it until you've programmed the whole four digits of the client account number pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is phone number one pressing the on button on the radio key takes us into the programming menu for programming phone number one and programming the phone number is virtually identical in the same process of what we did to program the client account number when we enter this programming option the first digit of the phone number will be flashing 
by pressing the on button on the radio key and subsequent presses of the on button it takes us through and will increment the number for the first digit you wish to have once you get to the number that you wish you then hold press and hold the panic button which then stores the first digit it moves us then on to the next digit where again we push the on button on the radio key get to the digit you wish for the second digit of the phone number push in the on button and so on until we get to the end of the phone number as the display is a five segment display it will only display the last five digits of the number the first digits of the phone number will be moved to the left but they're still there so you can see the last five digits of where you're up to once we've stored the phone number one we then hit the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is phone number two phone number two is a backup to phone one so if the call could not get through to the control room or the phone number one it then will revert to phone number two and try to attempt to get through on that number the programming of phone number two is identical to what we've just covered in phone number one pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is GSM signal strength if you're using the GSM dialer in the SG3 push the on button to go into signal strength and the SG3 will then display what the strength is 0 is for very low signal and 9 is for a good signal pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is abort dialer abort delay gives the opportunity to abort sending an alarm message to a central station within the program time if there is an alarm so therefore it gives the customer time to disarm the alarm system if they accidentally trip it on entry before it dials out to a control room to program the abort time you push the on button on the radio key this will take you into the setting will show you what's currently set at and then each subsequent press of the on button on the radio key will step you to the next time and the times are between 0 and 60 seconds in 5 second increments once you get the setting you wish push and hold the panic button to save your options pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is medic standing for medical key abort delay this option is used in conjunction with radio keys or radio buttons that have been programmed as medical keys if programmed the medical key abort time gives the opportunity to abort sending alarm message to the central station or via the dialer within the program time if the medical button has been accidentally pressed to program this medical abort time you press the on button on the radio key to take you into the option and then subsequent presses of the on button will cycle you through the sub menu which will cycle through times in five second increments as you cycle through the time once you get to the time that you wish to have you push and hold the panic button which to save that setting pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next programming option which is T calls or dialer test calls the SG3 can send through a test message through to the control room or through to your SMS audible dialing to report that the dialer and the SG3 is functioning correctly this option allows you to set up at what period of time do you want those test calls to go through pushing the on button on the radio key will enter into the test call options and then pushing the on button again and subsequent presses will cycle you through the sub menus of when you want that test calls to go through once you've selected the option you wish press and hold the panic button to save the setting pressing the off button on the radio key then takes us to the next option which is dialer where it allows you to set up the dialer reporting format pushing the on button on the radio key takes us into this option where we can set up the format the first reporting format is GSM CID CIB standing for contact ID and this is a format you select when you're going back to a central station 24-hour monitoring station hitting the on button on the radio key takes us to the next sub menu option which is GSM SMS this is for an SMS signal if you're going back to a mobile phone 
pushing the on button and the radio key again takes us to the next submenu option which is GSM AUD standing for audible dialing through to a mobile phone or a fixed landline. Pushing the on button of the radio key once more takes us to the next submenu option which is off and when off is selected the dialer is totally disabled. Once you've selected the option you wish push and hold the panic button which then saves this setting. Pushing the off button of the radio key takes us to the next option which is power or power management mode for the SG3. One of the unique features of the SG3 is its ability to run for a long period of time, typically three to four months, without being connected to mains power. To be able to do this, the SG3 has a lot of power management options of how and when you wish to use majority of power, example when the GSM is used, etc. To enter into the power management options, push the on button on the radio key to take into the power management options. Subsequent presses of the on button will then cycle through the submenus of the various power management options. What I suggest you do is to read through the installation manual that comes with the unit. On page 24 we'll explain full detail of the different options and what they're typically used for. Once you've selected the option you wish, if you want to change it from the default which is battery, then push and hold the panic button to save the programming option. Pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the next option which is default or reset back to factory default settings. If you'd like to default the system, push the on button on the radio key. This takes you into a sub-menu. Subsequent presses will cycle through the sub-menu of what you'd like to default. Select what you'd like defaulted back to factory default and then press and hold the panic button to default the system. Pushing the off button on the radio key takes us to the last programming option which is program exit. If you wish to exit program mode you then push the on button on the radio key that will take us out of program mode into normal operation mode or alternatively pressing the off button on the radio key starts us through the programming options again and we can go back to something we may have missed. Thank you for viewing this video which I hope assisted you but please read this video in conjunction with the programming and installation manual that accompanies this unit. You will also note on page 25 of the installation manual is a full programming summary that will assist you in quick easy lookup of the various options and what the default settings are. Thank you very much.